It's mm. Monday. Today happens to be the 14th the day of April 2014. Here's open you're up and about, and you're having a productive day so far. If you're off this morning, you're going to work later, sit back, relax, stay with us. And, of course, if you have to leave the home, we're transistorized and we love to travel. Take us with you. ABS Radio, 90.5 on the FM dial. Election time is in Antigua and Barbuda. It's in the air. With me, of course, is attorney at law and, of course, chairman of the United Progressive Party, Leon Chaco Simister. Good morning, sir. How are uh, you? Good morning, Dave. Uh, uh, you brought in? Of course. I always be happy to be on your program. Well, we're glad that you're with us this morning. We need some clarity. Uh, because, and I'm going to go straight to it, and then I'll, I need to talk to you about candidates. I need to talk to you about UPP, about Antigua Labor Party, billboards, because you're chairman. Uh, I think you, you know, what, what's your title for DCA? A chairman of DCA. DCA for, for DCA and stuff like that. But first of all, I, I, I want to say this to you. I read in the newspaper, the Daily Observer, that the uh, Reverend Brown made a comment. Reverend Brown came and says that they misquoted him, and that's not what he meant. I don't know the details. The election tone campaign, Bishop Charles W. Brown talks on civil disobedience. What is it that you got from the Reverend that he said, because I didn't hear, uh, I just read what I read in the paper, and there was a rebuttal from him. Well, let me start by saying that <coughs> the United Progressive Party going for a third term in what at times had been some challenging times, really need a valiant effort, to use the word of the day. Mm -hmm. I heard Reverend Brown on The Serpent Show. You uh, heard him? I heard it. I listened to the entire program. I think he is the best person to explain what he meant. Uh, he used the term civil disobedience, which we know is a term used to describe actions that challenges a law that one thinks is unjust or immoral or illegal. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that the term was used in the context of our politics because none of our election laws that we are governed by for elections, neither is our constitution unjust, unlawful, or immoral. Right, I, 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 the debate invariably led to the term of civil disorder, and there's some of us who believe because remember, uh, Bishop Brown is not new to Antigua and Barbuda. We can recall that at the time some members of the Electoral Commission were suspended. This was the gentleman that the Antigua Labour Party put on the Electoral Commission, so he's not free of politics. Let us make that clear. Um, I, I believe that when he spoke of civil disobedience, it, it was really some code words for civil disorder. Because there's nothing going on in Antigua and Barbuda today that would justify civil disobedience. Certainly that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. But civil disobedience is generally the actions taken by people in the population to challenge an immoral or unjust law. Okay, so that's the clarity that we're getting there. That's all you're going to say about well, that. Bishop, you know, he said he was misquoted. Yes. I have been seeing people being misquoted before. I have been misquoted before. And mm -hmm. I think he's the best person to clear it up. Mm -hmm. But what was very clear to me listening to him that night is that he was advocating that people behave in a particular way simply because the elections are not yet called, mm -hmm. uh, which I think at best was irresponsible because we are still very much within the constitutional framework for elections. Okay. Now, I can remember, because Antigua is a very small place and I've been around for a long time, in Antigua and Barbuda, prior to the United Progressive Party being in office, when the Antigua Labor Party was in office, folks was chanting, call the elections now. Absolutely. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with chanting, call, in the, call the elections now, mm -hmm. whether the elections are due or not. Mm -hmm. Because bear in mind that our system allows for elections to be called at any time, mm -hmm. but no later than five years after the parliament first met, after it was last dissolved. 
there's absolutely nothing wrong with individuals, political parties, or <coughs> groups of people asking for elections to be called now. It's a right they have. Mm -hmm. It's a different thing when you encourage persons to behave in a particular way when the time for elections to be called are still within the constitutional framework. I mean, when persons, including myself, I must say, uh, used to chant, call the election now, certainly it was within the, 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 the constitutional framework. Once you're within the constitutional framework, there's nothing wrong in asking for elections. Okay. They, but I think, though, that it is irresponsible, I repeat, it's irresponsible mm -hmm. to, you see, bear in mind, one could hear civil disobedience and interpret it to mean civil disorder, mm -hmm. right? And maybe that got lost in the entire conversation. And, and sometimes in this charge, uh, we, we have to be careful of the things that we say. Absolutely. Okay. You were in Barbuda over the weekend. Yes. That was just a... Terrific, and had nothing to do with cliffhane. It had nothing to do with cliffhane. But it was just a terrific experience. Again, uh, we were with the BPM at Madison, uh, with three cylinder in the background, and quite an energetic, high-powered political rally on the platform with uh, Trevor Walker and the Honorable Prime Minister, and all the members of the UPP and the BPM. And if the energy and the vibes and what we're seeing on the ground in Barbuda follows through, I think Barbuda will be safe. Now, I need to know this because the circles that I sit in, which are few, uh, what folks are saying out there, you, the, the political meetings, folks are looking for a roadmap. Yeah. We're in 2014. Uh, the economic situation in the world is this, and Antigua, Barbuda, we're suffering for that. What we are not hearing on the political platform as yet. I'm oh, no, anticipating. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Once you said oh, my, oh, my. but yes, okay. finish. That, that that what you're hearing on both political platforms, right? That it, is that now if I was advising the United Progressive Party, my aim would be let's focus on the things that you've done mm -hmm. and forget about who wants to get into the office. Why is it that in politics, I, maybe it's so, that we are looking at individuals when we are on platform and not on the party? No, I, I, I differ a bit. It's true, some uh, speakers have their style mm -hmm. and will look at an individual, and sometimes it is necessary because mm -hmm. it's individuals we are elected. Mm -hmm. But I could tell you, so far, the United Progressive Party has been, and I think some people think it's long overdue, mm -hmm. have been blowing this on. Mm. Right, and we have been telling the people and putting out information to the people as to what we have achieved. Mm -hmm. The next step is to tell you what we will seek to achieve once we are elected to government again. Mm -hmm. And of course, from time to time, as, as uh, some folks would say, you have to, you know, give a little political punch. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you have someone like Marlon Joseph, for example, mm -hmm. who believes, acts as if he is so, so he's like Pontius Pilate in this Easter season. But again, you have a clip with Cutie Benjamin on public radio telling him he must not lie to the people. He must learn to speak the truth. Now, you cannot ignore that. You cannot ignore a member of the Labour Party, t a candidate, telling another candidate, both of them senior members, on public radio that he must not lie to the people, that he must speak the truth. Certainly, we, we will say this is the kind of person coming to you, pretending to be wanting and other people within, them, within their party uh, telling them another. But that's not our focus. Really, most of that is the politics of the past, right? The personality politics is taking a backseat fast within the United Progressive Party, although it's very much on the front burner for the ALP. It's now uh, politics of issues. And that's what will you do in the future? We know you have done this, and we have <coughs> no apologies for what we have done. We know that we have some challenges. We know we haven't done everything that we'd like to do. And that's why we're seeking a third term. But it's not only what we do is important now. It's where we go from here. And we're not going... Look, the UPP only make deliverable promises. And that's our principle. We're not going to go with a pie in the sky. We're not going to tell you we will build 500 houses in 500 days. Additionally, in our development plan, we are responsible. Social security money is a social security 
Medical benefit money is for medical benefit. Education levy is for education. The statutory bodies were created, they get their money, they spend their money. We will not make it clear that we will use those money to advance our political career. We will not. We will only make deliverable promises. And it is based on a commitment to use the limited resources of Antigua and Barbuda for the greatest number of people. That's what the UPP is about.